climate change, greenhouse gases, carbon footprint. We hear terms like these all the time, but what do they actually mean? We definitely get the sense that this stuff's important, but why? And what can we do about it? Hi, I'm Jada. And I'm Christian. We're at Train Technologies in St. Paul, Minnesota, and what we're really talking about here is sustainability. Exactly, and that's a word that can mean a variety of things. For us, sustainability is all about meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet theirs. That's a pretty big goal, and one that affects every living thing on this planet. Today, we'll meet some of the people and companies working to make the future more sustainable, pairing big goals with bold actions. The effects of climate change are being really seen and felt in America, and they're being seen and felt right now. And find out things that we can do to make a difference too. Join us as we strive for a more sustainable future. On behalf of Discovery Education and Train Technologies, welcome to our virtual field trip. Before we dive in, let's take a minute to review how we got here. Climate change is the warming of the Earth's surface caused by human activity. Do you know how it started? This is a little before my time, but for about six million years, humans were fairly spread out and low tech. They lived close to their food sources and really only affected their environments locally. That was pretty much true until we hit the 1970s, about the time our grandparents were kids, because that's when climate change began to skyrocket. Since then, carbon dioxide or CO2 emissions have exploded compared to all human history before then. People moved into cities, populations grew, more homes and buildings were built. Food had to be transported much longer distances than ever before. And all of that activity created a much bigger demand for energy. And those harmful greenhouse gases we mentioned, like CO2 and methane that capture heat and keep it from escaping our atmosphere, began causing global temperatures to rise, slowly at first, but eventually faster year after year. We made the problem worse by removing too many trees, which normally counteract the effects of CO2 by gobbling it up to make oxygen. While the problem may have started back when people dressed like this, drove cars like this, and danced like this, the not so great news is that it's still happening today, and we can see the evidence of it all around us. Droughts, wildfires, habitat loss, food shortages, and natural disasters worse than we've ever seen until the last couple of decades. Although climate change is a serious problem, we're not powerless. We're not powerless. We're not powerless. There's some things that each of us can do to help, even if we may not realize it at first. Let's meet someone helping his industry change so that industry can help change the world. Hello, my name is Dwayne Cowan. I work for Train Technologies. I'm the Vice President of the Commercial Americas for Thermal King. Train Technology addresses sustainability in many ways. Indoor air quality, using clean technologies, transport, refrigeration, heating and cooling indoors. We're focused on sustainability, even down to the way we heat and cool our own building. So there's so many things that we do to address how we can make the world a better place. So if you look at some of the things we do from a refrigeration standpoint, there's a lot of energy used to transport our foods and all goods that are temperature managed. And that takes greenhouse gases, which in turn creates change in temperature for the society. And if you think about it, one of the major ways to reduce greenhouse gases is food waste. Did you know that one third of food produced globally is wasted or lost between the farm and the table? A lot of that is because it's not using the required temperature. Our job is to ensure that once it comes from that farm, that it's transported at the optimum temperature to extend the life of that food. 1.3 billion tons of food are lost or wasted around the world, an amount that could feed almost half of the world's population. Thermal King began with a sustainability problem. Joe Numero and Henry Warner were playing golf. And Henry Warner was a trucking company and they were delivering chickens to Chicago. And back then, you used ice to keep the load cool. Well, the truck broke down, the ice melted, and he lost the load of chickens. And Joe Numero said, what if I could create a solution that could relieve you from that problem going forward? So they made a bet. Joe Numero went back to Fred McKinley Jones, who was a prolific black inventor, and created the first refrigeration unit in 30 days. And that's how we started 
Thurman King. And as you go back to our building, you see the blueprints and all these medals of honor for this individual. It just reminds me of all the innovation that's been created to really make society a better place for all of us. Refrigerate transportation is important to the delivery of food, medicines, and vaccines. So you all may remember when COVID first happened and how the world changed and the need for vaccines to ensure that we can get back to a more normal society. Now, if you think about transport refrigeration, these vaccines need extremely cold temperatures, temperatures that we've never seen in terms of delivering vaccines. The units we produce were now needed to maintain those temperatures for these vaccines to get in the arms of people all across the globe. I remember that day I saw the first vaccines leave the plant, but I will tell you the pride you have when you're a part of that process. It is so important that corporations really get involved in sustainability. If you think about all the things that need to happen in this world and all the things you hear about global warming, it's imperative that we show leadership. So we came up with the Gigaton Challenge. The Gigaton Challenge is train technology's commitment by 2030 to reducing 1 billion metric tons of greenhouse gases. That's equivalent to 200 million cars driving every day for a year. If that seems like a large number, that is. As a company, today, we're working to reduce emissions. We're working with other companies to create zero emission type vehicles. We have truck companies that we're working with that will be an all electric unit. This unit will allow us to have no emissions. What does that mean? That means that there's no greenhouse gases emitted into our environment. And by partnering with these organizations, we're coming up with new technologies that will be the future for how we get refrigerated goods across the world. You, as a student, have the ability to focus on what's important to you, with your friends, your family. We all play a role, and it's up to all of us to really think about how we can create bold, bold challenges, and how we problem solve around those challenges. It makes all of us stronger. One company can change an industry, and one industry can change the world. That gigaton thing sounds impressive, but what he said about food loss totally blew my mind. I know. When food is wasted or lost, all the resources that went to producing that food, land, water, energy, labor, and money get wasted too. That makes our entire food system less sustainable. Plus, when spoiled food eventually goes into landfills, it decomposes and creates, you guessed it, greenhouse gas emissions, further contributing to climate change. Which is pretty bad news, considering the average American wastes about 915 pounds of food each year. No way, let's do something about it. There are lots of easy things we can do to help both before and after we bring food home. Ask your family to consider buying less at the supermarket. Buying food for only a few days at a time reduces the chance items will get buried or forgotten. Offer to help by keeping the official grocery list only what you need, and stick to it. Take smaller portions at home and resist ordering more than you can eat at restaurants. Save leftovers for another meal. Try your best to use up the produce you've already purchased before buying more. And speaking of produce, the closer to home your food has grown, the better. Because transporting food can have a big impact on the planet. The further it has to travel, the more fuel consumed to get it to you. So buy from your local farmer's market and encourage grocery stores and restaurants to buy local too. That's what it means when a restaurant says it's farm to table. It makes a big difference. Hey, why not try getting your school to buy local and reduce food waste too? Absolutely. I know a lot of schools have gardens that not only provide food for students, but it also teaches them how to grow, preserve, and prepare healthy food at home. That's cool. I could probably stand to get a little healthier with some of my food decisions, especially knowing it's better for the planet now. Same here. It's our planet, so we owe it to ourselves to make choices and set goals that will lead to a healthy future that we can all look forward to. Christian, you actually talked to some people about eliminating food waste and other big challenges. Yeah, what's interesting is the same approach used to solve a problem like food waste can be used to solve other problems like indoor air quality. 
While large goals can seem daunting, they can be met when groups of people really come together to create strategic goals into smaller projects to help to meet that goal. Sarah Wilkie is Train Technology's Senior Marketing Manager. Hi, Sarah. Hey there. She leads marketing for commercial building controls and lighting. Commercial buildings can be anything from the school you go to, your parents' office building, your doctor's office. And what's really important to know about commercial buildings is 50% of their energy use comes from HVAC, or heating and cooling, and lighting of that building. Sarah, the challenges we're facing around sustainability seem so big. Is there really any hope that we can fix these problems? Absolutely. Just think about how we're restoring the ozone, or even how we put a man on the moon. The first step in doing anything towards a challenge is defining where we are today or creating a baseline. Schools in America actually waste 25% of the energy that they consume. The controls we make will help our schools to understand are we wasting energy and how we can use our energy a lot more efficiently. It's really important to know while I'm talking a lot about the technology within the building, it's not just the technology that can solve the problem. We need technology and people to solve our problem. What's a problem that scientists at Train Technologies are always working on? Climate change actually also affects the air we breathe, both indoors and outdoors, which we refer to as indoor air quality. So why is indoor air quality such a big deal? So with the recent pandemic, all we talk about is what we're doing indoors and how safe or unsafe it might be, right? So when we think about being in a building, it's about the air that we're breathing within that building. In fact, in a school, if you think about the air you as a student or your teachers are breathing, it can actually affect you with both short and long-term health issues. How do scientists approach big targets like indoor air quality? So it's really not that different from a science fair project you might be doing or an experiment that you're doing within class, which my mom was a middle school science teacher, so she's gonna be really excited for me to talk about this. The process that we follow within trained technologies involves three steps, to assess, mitigate, and then manage. The first step is assess. This is where we develop our baseline. So when you think about your classroom, for example, how much are the windows open? How many people are in the classroom? Asking questions like that and collecting that data helps us to assess the building. The next is around mitigate. This is where we start to develop a hypothesis and determine variables we might want to change in the space. So for example, if you're trying to affect the humidity in a space, a variable that you might tweak is how much outdoor air is you're bringing into the room. You can do this through opening windows, turning on different things on the HVAC system, things that our building automation systems are doing for the classroom. Teamwork is also really important in this step. One single person is not gonna have all the answers and we all bring different strengths to the table. The third step is around manage. This is the step where we measure to ensure that, hey, is the variable that we're changing actually making a difference? So by opening the window, is that affecting the humidity and making the room a bit more comfortable for the students? Thanks, Sarah. Now let's talk to an engineer about how they apply these steps to real-world sustainability issues. Hi, I'm Vineet Nala. I'm Senior Systems Engineer, part of our Control Systems Engineering team. Being an engineer mostly involves solving difficult problems. Sometimes I'm in the lab working with the team of uh, engineers trying to understand what are we trying to solve for. And sometimes I'm at my computer trying to integrate my solution into how to solve that problem. And sometimes it's also working with different teams as mainly involves engineers, product managers, service managers. Today, as we are designing the products and solving the problems, the bigger picture that we think about is not just the design, but how is our design impacting the world? How is our design impacting the sustainability? It is really rewarding to see how my wealth of knowledge and skill set has been put into developing products that solve real world problems, which involves distribution of food, distribution of medicine, and in the recent times, it's been vaccine distribution. And it all connects back to my real life and my day-to-day -day life, my community, my family. The first thing I do when I'm presented with a problem is understand the problem, because that is the core, trying to understand what I'm trying to solve, why I'm trying to solve, and where has the problem evolved from. Sometimes a single engineer may not be able to get all the answers, but we have a community of 
subject matter experts that we rely on who bring in different expertise from different engineering functions. When I'm stuck on a problem, first I acknowledge that I'm not solving something which is easy. And those are the times where I rely mostly on my resources and tools. That resources and tools may come in the form of a fellow engineer, a fellow expert, or sometimes it may also come in the form of reading a book, taking a class. So that resources and tools differ on what kind of problem you're solving. There was this problem where we had to solve how to store strawberries for a certain customer. Some fruits and vegetables require a certain temperature for them to stay fresh for a longer period of time. Asking right questions, making the right assumptions, and collecting the right data helps us solve the global issue of food wastage. A problem is a problem no matter how big or small it is. Today when you're at school and you're working on a math problem, it may feel like, oh, it's a math problem. How can I really relate this to my real world? The bigger thing that you're going to get out of it is the process of getting to a solution, which is curiosity and your perseverance to problem solving. Recognize you own your future. Today's world provides some very impressive options to improve and enhance your skill set. Identify what your learning style is. Is it more of a self-learning style? Or is it more of a needing a motivator to help you learn? Or do you need someone who can hold you accountable? And then create a goal and create a plan how to get to that goal. And the bigger thing is, it's okay to fail. Learn from your failures. Today you might be solving a math problem, but tomorrow you might have an idea how to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. It's easy to forget we humans have solved some pretty big challenges in the past. True. So how do we go about choosing and accomplishing big goals ourselves to build more sustainable futures where we live? Let's break it down for you, shall we? To start, find something you're passionate about. Make it big and meaningful. Extra points of the goal is so bold, it almost feels too big. Setting ambitious goals with smaller, actionable steps to make them happen can be inspiring. It might even encourage others to join you in achieving them. Next, do some thinking. Get clear on what your goal will entail and how life will look once you've achieved it. This next part is important, trust me. Once you see where you are in relation to your goal, you'll have a better sense of what direction to go next. Part of your plan should include specific milestones, smaller goals that build on each other along the way. Think of these as action steps that, once completed, help you reach your master goal. One step at a time. Give yourself deadlines. Well, I'm not a fan of deadlines. But you still have to do it. Set a time frame that's realistic, but also ambitious. Be smart with your time. A target schedule with deadlines gives you a way to measure your progress and keep you committed. Your level of commitment will be the most important factor in determining how successful you are in achieving your goal. Finally, begin tackling the smaller milestones you set and keep working consistently. Don't be afraid to bring in other people and resources to help you reach the goals when needed. It's hard to move mountains alone, but you can accomplish a lot when you get people moving toward the same goal together. Now, let's meet someone who proves that students can do this too and help address sustainability issues even while they're still in school. Hi, my name is Minna Cook. Um, I'm 16 years old and I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Sustainability for me is a really personal thing. When there were all these wildfires in California and I have a lot of family members who live in California, my dad and all my cousins calling me and talking to me about how much smoke there was and my dad kind of developed like a cyst on his throat because he was breathing in so much smoke on the daily and it was kind of like a big like eureka moment for me since I guess I never connected climate change being something that could actually affect my life really directly in that way. 
I became involved in upcycling my clothes and thrifting. I just had a lot of really old clothes like lying around and I felt like I either have to just get rid of these or do something with them and so I started experimenting with changing up old shirts or pants that I didn't really wear anymore to sort of fit my style now. There's a lot of waste created through fast fashion. Fast fashion is manufacturing clothes as fast as possible to keep up with trend cycles and also manufacturing as many of them as possible out of cheap synthetic materials so that they can be sold for really cheap prices and made for a really inexpensive amount of labor. And so the second that you start realizing that, you start to go, wow, this is like really affecting the environment and I don't want to be the person to support that. But if you don't have the money or the means to spend money on, you know, these like really expensive, sustainable fashion brands, you kind of wonder what you're going to do then. And so really the only place to go to, I think, is buying your clothes used. Young people today are more concerned with issues about sustainability because We've been growing up hearing about global warming and climate change this like for out my entire childhood I've heard about that and that's been something that we learn about. We have to do something about this right now or there isn't going to be a recognizable ecosystem by the time that we become adults or when we become seniors. We have to organize and figure out exactly what we want and create a world where People don't have to go hungry because of drought, and people don't have to die in wildfires. I'm a member of the Kitty Anderson Youth Science Center, or the KAYSC, which is at the Science Museum of Minnesota. And within the Science Center, I'm part of the Environmental Justice and Sustainability crew. We get to learn something about sustainability and how it affects us, and things that we can do to sort of reduce our carbon footprint and also educate other people on environmental justice issues. I would say that if you feel powerless, you should know that every single person has the potential to have their voice matter. It's really just a point of actually getting it out there. And that doesn't even mean going on national TV or anything. Getting your voice out there can be talking to your friends at school about these types of issues. It can be going and talking to your older parents who might not be aware of how these things are affecting you and other people. Everyone has the potential to like, make a difference using their voice. Very small thing that you can do is just go wherever you live, go and see if there are organizations like the one that I'm a part of that can get you connected with other people. The best resource that you have is the people around you who might have more life experience and can teach you things that you don't already know. Sustainability is a really complicated issue and it means a lot of different things. And I think if you are interested in figuring out what you can do, about it in your own life. Just pick some issue that you're really passionate about and learn what you can about it. If you can pick one thing that is actionable and you can do right now, then you will feel like you are making a difference because you are. Wow, I love what he had to say about finding ways to address sustainability in areas you're already passionate about. He makes it look easy. You know, this virtual field trip has been pretty enlightening for me. I love seeing how companies and individuals are working together to challenge what's possible. And setting the kind of bold, inspiring goals we need to make a more sustainable world. We each have a lot more power to affect the world around us through our goals and actions than I realized. We'd like to thank Train Technologies for making today's virtual field trip possible. And we especially want to thank Dwayne Cowan, Vanitha Nala, Sarah Wilkie, and Mina Cook for sharing their insights. Remember, the power to change our world begins with us. Thanks for joining us today.